Beyond. 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 Part two, Electric Boogaloo, the secret Ooh. bonus episode of Beyond. They get mad at us every time we do that. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. To Beyond, uh, this is our God of War special. <gasps> totally spoiler-free. If you're, if you're avoiding spoilers entirely, please just run away from the internet and don't look at anything related to God of War because that is a good way to get spoiled. But we are avoiding any story spoilers as much as possible. My name is Max Scovel. I'm joined by Jonathan Dornbush and Brian Altano. Hey, Beyond. You guys have both played God of War and finished it. Yes. Yeah. And I've played a bunch of it, but I haven't finished yeah. it. So yes. I don't want to be spoiled either. So Ooh. Okay, so I won't tell you about the rhythm level where you have to take out your guitar controller. I thought that was weird yeah. that he does that. It's a weird inclusion. But did you how 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 many points did you get in the skateboarding minigame? Seventeen. I don't really I don't yeah, believe seventeen a word times. Of what you're saying. I, I got seven twenty, yeah. which is a cool yeah. trick. Oh, well, did you get okay. to the area where it just becomes the Simpsons hit and run? Okay, okay. that was okay. not. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, 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 this is one of the most anticipated <laughs> games in okay. quite some time. Yeah, Let's not yeah. goof around First too much. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to set the tone really quick and say yes. that um, God of War, uh, going into this game specifically, I was A, not the biggest fan of the franchise. I appreciated it for its sort of like gruff br br bravado and action heavy combo driven giant boss fights bloody violent right. you know sort of 90s 2000s video game protagonist big ass male dude aesthetic right um i feel like that at a time and a place in the in the, in the universe of the industry um and uh this is in a very different direction than that and i will also say that going into this game i did not know what i expected I expected a sort of smaller, more, um, I would say, like corridored off action game uh, that felt sort of like a slightly roomier Hellblade. What I got with God of War and what you'll get with God of War is bigger than anything you thought you were going to get. It is far more grand in every sense. It is far more fun. Uh, it is far more endearing and human and violent and big and hey, hey, giant. Hey, hey, we got to talk about it for like half an hour. No, no, we won't. We won't. We don't, don't burn through it all. It all. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I have so many things to say. Um, but I just want to say, I don't want your expectations to go through the roof. But if you're like me and you've been sort of, you know, had one foot in and sort of watching preview coverage, um, this game is big. This is a big, big, special, great game. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, Get excited. Yeah. Jonathan, oh, you're, yeah. you're reviewing it? Yes, I'm your... reviewing it for us. Uh, it will have a very high score. You can read that review on IGN.com uh, as you can listen to this. They both go up at the same time. Uh, and yeah, I was, similarly to Brian, I was consistently and delightedly like surprised at nearly every beat of this game. Um, I went in, I played the first three God of Wars, really enjoyed the scale of them and the combat of them all, uh, but always felt like Kratos was this flat character as much as... Uh, exposition, exposition in those games would try to tell me otherwise. I always mm. very much thought he was a one-note character. This game completely revolutionizes revolutionizes that for me. I'm so excited. I can't speak. It's just cool. so good. Uh, there, this feels like so much of an evolution of the franchise, and there are so many little things along the way that surprised me and made me smile. I turned into a cl cliche and literally jumped out of my chair a few times in enjoyment at some of the things that happened in this game and also mm -hmm. fell apart at others and was devastated it's, by them. Yeah, there is, it a, is a wide spectrum of human emotion that happens within the development of the characters in this yeah. game and that if you have a heart, uh, will happen to you as you play it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, now, what yeah. about the people who don't have hearts, the true God of War fans, whose hearts are only just blackened cinders of rage? Then the game is still fun as. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is <laughs> no, really. It's such like, a fun game. To this play. is a. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, an evolution of of Kratos and 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 the characters around him. This is a fantastic way to tell a story. It's also a video game ass video game. Mm -hmm. And I kind of love it for that. Me too. Because yeah. this is this is a game about 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 killing things. It's about upgrading your stats. It's about tr traveling through this massive world and collecting things and uh, so solving puzzles and fighting a bunch of enemies in an <laughs> elevator. Like there's there's some big ass video game boss fights. Yeah. There's some wonderful, quiet, intimate moments that sometimes are you know as 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 small as a glance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but if you don't care about any of that, I mean, it's going to happen with or without you. That's They wrote a story. You can still kick, really a, kick an ogre's ass. And you can you still can kick still, an ogre's you ass. Know, you curb can... stomp a skeleton or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just the, the simple, you've seen it in all the trailers, but Kratos throwing his axe and then getting it back. It is. And you talk about this in your yes. review. So the Leviathan axe is uh, Kratos' main new weapon. And it's a giant axe with, imbued with frost power. And you can hack and slash away at your enemies with it. And I love the combat system. But the coolest thing about it is that you can throw it and also retrieve it. It's mm -hmm. basically acts like 
Thor's hammer Mjolnir, where you throw it and then it comes whipping back to you and it can hit enemies as it's whipping back. It's and so much fun. It's yeah. so satisfying. The first time I did it, what happened was I threw the axe, it missed an enemy, and I recalled it, and then it hit them in the head and just killed them in one shot on the way back. It was like, oh, this thing is perfect. This I've, weapon yeah. is so I've good. I've like thrown it at something like a tree and got it stuck there and then went on and just punched people because that's the cool thing about this game is you can throw the axe and then punch a bunch of people with your fists, which is still great because you are... Kratos. It yes. feels so good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And then just like ran through like two or three more environments and I'd be like, oh yeah, that's right, my axe. And I hit the return button and it's just like... Whoosh, 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 it's I pull it so down. good. And it feels like it's always coming sort of vaguely from the angle where yes. I left it. Yeah. Which it's this sort of this like this boomerang that yeah. always comes back to you. It will take a little more time too if you've gone further away from yeah. it. Like it's not always the exact same amount of time you have to wait for it. And it's what's really smart. It's and it feels so good. And I don't know what they did if they worked on it for a long time or just found it very easily, but like the rumble in the controller feels like just yeah. the precise amount of rumble to make me feel like, oh I am grabbing that axe. Like I, of course I'm not, but it feels like we've that. we've all had rumble so for so long. I mean since since arcades, but also specifically since like the rumble pack on the N sixty four was one of the first to sort of be like, here's this thing, you're playing Star Fox, and when you do barrel rolls, like, you feel it. Um, I, It's something we kind of take for granted, you know? I mean, for sure. I, with, with the Switch, there's, like, the HD rumble, which does some special things when you're moving, the, playing the milking game in one, two, switch, or whatever, <laughs> moving the balls around in the guy's hand. Listening for them over here, yeah. Um, <laughs> but the rumble in this game is fantastic, and I didn't think I'd be saying that in yep. 2018. Me neither. It's just it something... It, this, is, this kind of, like, grindy thing when you start sprinting, which is, like, him, his, like, feet hitting gravel. Like yeah. Just kind of, it, and it's... It, they didn't have to do that. Yeah, like they yeah. didn't have to do that. It, yeah. I, I had it on a table during a cutscene, and it just sounded like a chainsaw yep. for a second. And I picked uh, it up and was holding it. It was very, very special. Yeah, uh, I don't even like. I, there's a lot to talk about with this game. Yeah, it's, yes. it's, really, it's yeah. really something. Uh, let's <laughs> just say, kind of, am I crazy in saying that top to bottom, this is a like technically rock solid game? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've a uh, few play people have been playing in the office, and we've noticed occasional frame rate dips and things. Some people have had a little mm. worse than others, but by and large, I haven't really encountered any problems, let alone Same. any that prevented my enjoyment of the game. Have those people been playing on PS4 Pros? Or? Uh, both. Some okay. on launch PS4 Eris okay. and then PS4 Pros. So and worth noting, the, the the Pro does have a setting to do either prioritize, prioritize frame rate or resolution. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been I've been playing with resolution prioritized to be like, oh, and it's, it's, you know. Same. I actually, I jumped over to 60 frames a second after, uh, per second, after um, playing the first three or four hours um, with the resolution bumped up. And I, I appreciate the visual fidelity over the um, sort of like the speed of the frame rate. It actually sort of felt like Benny Hill. Yeah. <laughs> like someone had been speeding things up a little bit, but I, I do appreciate that it's there. I, um, I feel like the beauty of this game, at least for me, and I talk about it a bit in my view, or my review can't be understated. Like mm -hmm. I went out and bought a 4K TV while reviewing this game. Really? Yes. I bought a 4K TV and a PS4 Pro because I played the first 10 hours or so on my launch PS4 and it looked gorgeous. And then I tried it on a Pro because I'm like, I should see what that looks like. Yep. And I was blown away and was like, I need a PS4 Pro, I need a 4K TV. The joke Jesus I keep making job. is, yeah, yeah, let's not let's not talk about my bank account. Oh, uh, I Like, the sky looks real. You look up at the clouds and the the vibrancy mm -hmm. of it, and I was just floored, and the textures on Kratos. And you can see his that's, pores. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's crazy, his, but... I, I stopped it a minute ago, and I, I, like, I think they're they're patching in a camera mode, so you can go in and... Yeah, they're, do, they're putting in a photo mode. mode. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, it definitely has camera, camera controls. Yes. Right, no, I mean... you know, there, It's on the triggers. It's like the original Spyro. You have to go back and forth. <laughs> but I mean, all that stuff that people are, have been doing with with proprietary Sony games. Yeah. I'm really happy they're adding that in there because this game is 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 stunning. Uh, I'm a huge stickler for fantasy art that is grounded but still interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to make something that looks sort of like uh, kind of boilerplate. Uh, and I mean, like I, I have this like Skyrim, for instance, is kind of like. I, I like it. It looks Lord of the Rings, Game of Thronesy, but at the same time, it's not like it's gorgeous, but it's also very like kind of eh, grounded, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in this case, they managed to have some very weird, crazy designs and yes. lots of color without making me feel like I'm just in a blacklight poster. I totally agree. Uh, yeah. It's it's really hard to do that because it's it's, it's fa fantasy is by nature fantastical right mm -hmm. but it's also very iterative in terms of how many people have reinterpreted the same thing and this is effectively um a game about 
mostly royalty free mythological characters <laughs> that everyone has interpreted. I mean, Thor Ragnarok is a, is a movie that came out just a few months ago that that interpret interpreted this some of the themes and some of the the sort of the feelings in, in a lot of this world, right? But this goes in such a different direction um, that I really appreciate, and the fact that it's a video game that you can walk around in means that it will consistently surprise you. And the way I said before of sort of like this game is bigger than you think it is. Um, environmentally as well, like we've only seen a very small part of this leading yes. into this game, um, but as you sort of explore more of this, again, very big world. Like this is a big, massive world. You can I, miss huge parts of this world. Like if yeah. you just play through the story, you may miss major elements of this Yeah, world. and so when, when you sort of dip around into other areas, at some point, a few hours into the game, it, it just really, really opens up for you. And you have a lot of opportunity to sort of move around and go to different places and visit locales and hunt things and collect things and kill giant evil <laughs> garbage men. What? And, no, and, and, and through all of that, you start to see a lot of the sort of beauty in, 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 the, in the creativity and variety in this world that is more than just like the snowy woods, you know, and like uh, it, there's, it's more than just the mountaintop mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever you think you're going to see. There's a lot of very lush, beautiful places in this game that, that took me a second to be like, mm. oh, yeah. like you yeah. didn't need to make this, but you did because you care. I've I, talked about this before, but like there's that, there's that approach to make to designing something where maybe you just want to draw the cool parts. Yeah. You just want to, you just want to have dessert. You don't want to eat your vegetables. But in this case, I think they really did both. Cause mm -hmm. like you'll come across a chair just like a wooden chair. And mm -hmm. if you look at the chair, it's a stunning, gorgeous chair, and they really took their time with it. But there are also giant mythological monsters that <laughs> yeah. you will kick the asses of, yeah. and it's nice to have that kind of that balance, and it really does feel well-rounded because of that. I had I fought like um, a big one of the bigger bad guys early on in the game, and uh, I turned the corner. One of the cool things about this game is that there are treasures everywhere, and they, they all feel getting... Oh, finding treasure feels rewarding. Yes. Um, unlocking like paths and opening up doors feels rewarding. It, at times, it's almost it's like very video gamey, right? It's like hit three switches or like light up the light tubes or whatever it is. Um, and I ducked out in this little corner, and it was just a small treasure chest with a, which a little with a little bit of gold in it, which you can use to like kind of uh, upgrade your stuff. And I looked up from the treasure chest. It was in this little nook, and like seven feet above it was just this little crag of rocks that came together in this triangle. And in the triangle was this little pit of moss with a couple of like clovers growing out of it and some water dripping from it. And it was seven feet up in the air. You had to pan the camera up to look at it. Yeah, It benefits nobody. There is no one who was like, it's a better game because of that. But they know that they put it there for people like me who are going to poke around this gorgeous world and who are going to be rewarded by looking into the corners of it yeah. and finding something that's that's lived in and believable and and lush. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there's something so special about that. It's It, it shows that they genuinely give... <laughs> Yes. About every, every little detail they put this, in this feels game. like a game that the that was played. Yeah, that people yeah. played it before they released it, and they were like, "Hey, here's what works, here's what doesn't." And it mm -hmm. feels like I think that uh, Corey Barlog, who was on the show last week, I guess, uh, he talked about like he tweeted out like he played through it his third time or fourth time or whatever, and it, and just. It, it shows yep. the fact mm -hmm. that yeah. people took the time to actually be like, all right, what are we putting out there? What is this? And yeah. what should it be? There yeah. is, there's so much forethought and I can't understate it enough about why I love this game so much as that there is so much thought put into every aspect of it, informing the other aspects. Yeah. And like, it is such a well oiled machine where the score impacts the w gameplay, which impacts the score. Story, which impacts the way the world unfurls to you. Like the world does open up, but the way that they continue to open up the world and make revisiting places you've already been worth going back to worth it is so smart this, and so built into yeah, the world. We throw this term around a lot because we don't have a better one, but um, it gets Metroidvania -y at times in terms of getting equipment or empowering some of your your items with a specific ability. And then returning to areas you've been to before and having that thing in the back of your head where you're going through an area for the first time and you're like, this treasure chest is covered in in like in vines and they're entangled and I'm throwing my axe at them and I'm shooting them and I'm doing everything I can and nothing's working. And then five hours later, six hours later, something pops in your head and you go, oh yeah, I know how to open that up now. And you go back and you, and you do it and you're rewarded for that. And I think there's something really, really special about that because I... I we don't like that that gets handled very differently in a lot of games and I think that this to speak on this is like a as in bigger terminology I think that um 
this game feels a lot like sort of a not necessarily a greatest hits, but like this really dedicated mixtape to a lot of the PlayStation exclusive games that we all know and love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And whereas The Last of Us uh, has a lot of the sort of sim- similar dynamics in terms of like this, you know, father child relationship in this in this war torn world, uh, traversing environments together. Um, it's pretty much a a line through a story, whereas this one lets you backtrack a lot and lets you, yeah. lets you re-experience and, and revisit areas and open them up. Um, I think we should talk about uh, Kratos and Treus and and their and their relationship because once again, I have to say, you are going into this game with expectations based on video games you played that this is a massive escort mission. You are wrong. I thought it would be that way. You're wrong. We're all wrong. Well, and just and all, I'm so happy to say that. <laughs> all media in general just tells me that the small kid who's with you for the story, whether it's a movie, TV show, or game, is going to be annoying and yeah. going to be bad and not going to really elevate the story in any way. Yeah. But their relationship and Atreus' characterization and the performance behind him the, works so well. The it. most brilliant thing is that Atreus is a character who annoys the <laughs> out of Kratos, at least early on. Yeah. Uh, but he does not annoy the player. Yeah. He managed, he, Kratos is babysitting this kid, but the player is not making Kratos babysit. Yeah. Yes. Like, and that is a really fine line to walk. And he manages to do this thing where he'll, um, he'll point stuff out in the world or he'll comment on things in a way that is sort of, it informs the player. It like helps world build. And Kratos doesn't want to chat. He mm-hmm. really doesn't yep. want to have a conversation. He's very like, Shut up! You know, their their he calls dynamic. Him boy, the whole time. Yeah. Dad, They're, are we there yet? Shut up, boy! Yeah. I think their dynamic is brilliant in terms yeah. of this like gruff mm-hmm. macho guy, and then this like yeah. endearing child. And there are moments, and again, not spoiling anything. There are moments where the like the boy has childlike wonder that um, he sort of helps bring to his father. And there are moments where. His father is sort of like tough it out, which helps bring it to the child. And I think the the way their relationship meets and grows and evolves um, and begins as sort of a a rudimentary hunting trip Mm -hmm. and turns in this entire thing is really, really beautiful and really thought, really thoughtful. And so, like, I wrote down a couple of characters here in video games that I love that um, I sort of wince at thinking about one of my, some of my work is, worst experiences with them. Uh, Booker and Elizabeth in Bioshock Infinite. If you think about walking around that world, ma- Elizabeth constantly got stuck on things. You'd have to like make sure she was at the door with you. Um, Leon and Ashley in Resident Evil 4, that entire second half of that movie, our game, uh, is, is effectively an escort mission. If you beat it, when you play it again, you can unlock a suit of armor for Ashley so she doesn't get killed constantly. And that's the first thing I always do when I beat that game because it's an annoying thing to deal with her. Uh, Joel and Ellie, you are constantly pushing her. Le- this is a Teach lot of naughty her to dog. swim. <laughs> yeah. A lot of naughty dog games are basically like help her up this thing, help him push this thing. Um, you know, there he got kidnapped, she got kidnapped, help them over here. Um, there's a lot of that. Yeah. And I wrote that. Um, uh, Atreus actually feels more like Navi from Ocarina of Time, except he can kill things for you. Yep. Um, and he doesn't, he also doesn't, he's not like, he's not hey, like, hey, look, hey, hey, look, yeah. look. He, he's like, he does occasionally go like, hey, we could go explore yeah. if you want to, but yeah. it's never but then, but then he, he but then he's like, yes. he's like, yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if you feel if like it, want, if you want yeah. to. He's so apologetic. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, there is, the relationship between them is so symbiotic, both in the story and reflected in the gameplay as well, which I love because from minute one, you are still his father. And so you're telling him what to do in battle. Like yeah. when he's shooting arrows, it's because you are pressing square to mm-hmm. make him do that. But like the way they play with that and the way his abilities grow and evolve is so smart. Yeah. And just, you can see it in the acting too. Like the way he walks around, he's nervous around Kratos at the beginning, mm-hmm. but then Kratos needs his help to get through this world because yeah, Atreus, he, he grows with, he grows with your help almost. Yes. And it, yeah. it's, it's sort of like having like a murdering Tamagotchi or something like that. Like you, the mm-hmm. more love you put into this thing or not necessarily love, but effort and, and parenting, the more you get back. And I think like anecdotally, I just wanted to say that I, so many times in this game, killed a bunch of bad guys and then like ran up this this like ladder and grabbed a treasure chest and then ran back down and jumped in my boat and I turned around and there he was. And I never had to say like, where is he gonna, I always just knew he would be right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there isn't any of that like, you do not spend a lot of time standing around this game waiting for him to catch up no, with you. No, it's actually yeah. just, it's out, it's, it's, it's something you don't have to think about. Both yeah. him it's handled and the, so and the, well. And the axe are, it, without without just seeming like a video game thing that just kind of this spawns randomly behind you, there's a, there's a part where he's, He's like your lore keeper, and you'll find these like these sort of these big like obelisks or whatever. Mm-hmm. He'll translate yeah. them and write them down in your diary or whatever. And I left him. He, he'll be like, "Boy, what does this say?" 
And he'll be like, oh, father, father, I'll go look at it. And I was like, I'm going to go climb a ladder over here. And I go to climb the ladder, and I was like sort of waiting for a second. And then he comes scampering by, and it's like, Laura added it. It was like, yeah. he actually took the time to write it down. It wasn't completely like he just spawns instantaneously yes. next to yeah. you. Or he's not standing there being like, where'd you go? Hey, wait. Like he's, he, yeah. he does his thing, he writes it down, and he comes and catches up with and you. And you can go about your day and still look for stuff. Yeah. It's so smart. No, and what, it's, it's a, yeah. It's, and what I love about that, too, is because he finds so much of the lore for you, which you can go into the menus and look through all of that, like, re- Knowledge is its own reward in this game, yeah. and learning about the mythology and of Norse myth and all these figures and locations is part of the game. And sometimes your reward for just exploring more is here's that information about that character you may have heard someone say one line of dialogue about, but I wanted to know more about it. Yeah, yeah. the and way I'll, it's all presented. So I, what I love is that he also is writing a strategy guide in real time. Yes, where yeah. if you encounter an enemy and you fight it, you know, like just a random goon or whatever, and you and you beat it up, it'll occasionally after you fight it for the first time, a little sort of like journal up, entry updated, whatever, and you open it up and there's this like hand drawn sketch of this enemy yeah. and Atreus will be like will have been like we should probably you should probably be careful if he stomps his feet he's about to charge and it's like yeah. the yeah. kid is writing a field guide to monsters yeah. and those and, update over time as yeah. you and fight more of yeah and it's, and it's written from the perspective of like this uh, idyllic child who's looking at the world and it, it's coming up with theories about where some of these things want to come from and all of that is completely supplemental content because the game story on its own is fantastic and the way that narrative is delivered is not reliant on subtext or anything like that. If you want to dig in, that stuff's there and it only enriches the mm-hmm. uh, the core uh, thesis, I would say. Mm-hmm. But that story on its own is fantastic. And so are the, uh, the, the writing in this game is excellent. It's so good. The side characters in this game are incredible. Like it's just... It it feels like there, and there aren't a ton of them, but the ones that are there, and I won't, I don't want to spoil mm-hmm. any of them, but the ones that are there are so much fun, yes, and they feel so fully realized. Yeah. Like there was, there was, I, it's sort of like they they wrote it from the perspective of saying like, here's this character, how would he interact or she interact with literally everything on this list, every sort of emotion, you know, jealousy, rage, uh, resentment, um, impatience, all these things, and they did that, and they and they they built very. These are none of these characters are really like one note. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely so, expected certain characters to be comedic relief, and that's it. But you, they become fully realized, and there's depth to their stories, and there's more you can search beyond what they just tell you in the yeah. normal flow of the play, which I love. Uh, so the term cinematic gets thrown around a lot when yes. talking about games, and I mean that's sort of like obviously it's movies of always been sort of the the dorky younger brother of or, uh, games have been the younger brother of movies whatever there's always that that urge to be taken as a legitimate medium and taken seriously um this is the, one of the first games in quite some time where i feel like the the cutscenes have the sort of the pacing they in, never cut ex- well, <laughs> yeah. exactly the, the sorry the cinematic scenes yeah, the, the, the you know the the whatever th- those parts yeah they breathe like yes. they're very they're very they're paced evenly um the characters aren't just like bursting into exposition to really get to it it feels like um it feels almost improvised it feels like very like very alive you'd be talking to a, a blue dwarf about swords or whatever hammers weapons and and you're like this feels like a, a fleshed out real character in spite of the fact that it is a blue dwarf and you are talking about the right. most utterly whimsical nonsense fanta crap baloney mm-hmm. uh and then you'll get out of that and it doesn't force your hand in any kind of like, oh, here's the, like oftentimes when games try to be cinematic, the gameplay suffers as a result. Um, and you see this with uh, with quick time events or with just sort of parts where you're you're on rails or whatever. And when this game is not uh, being cinematic, it is incredibly gamey. Yes. And it's really, really impressive how well that 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 line is walked. Yeah. 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 It, and on, on the flip side, I think the way they they humanize Kratos is really important important and cannot be understated because it's this is again this is a character from the era where like you know dads don't cry basically right like it's just all these macho bald space Mm -hmm. marines um but there are moments and they are nuanced in this game where they will just show kratos face and you feel the weight of the world on his shoulders yeah and he's he's breaking a little bit in in the same way that like like when you saw like a dad or a, a teacher or a cop or something like that grow growing up have a human moment where these 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 superheroes in your life right yeah, yeah. um cracked for a minute yeah like, there's a lot made of like the full single continuous shot from beginning to end and they, it looks really great in battles and there's some awesome epic moments but the moments that stuck for me of this being a single continuous shot is those quiet moments yeah. and you're just forced to sit with Kratos and to deal with those emotions too and it's such a smart use can of we that. take a minute and reflect on the fact that Kratos, possibly the most heavy-handed, ham-fisted 
type of character. He looks like a he looks like a fucking Rob Liefeld drawing of the lead singer from <laughs> Disturbed. Yeah. Like he's he is a pretty one note and also not subtle at all. And they managed to endow this character with like humanity and nuance. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, without at the same time without the game suffering. Like it's still yeah. that's the thing. It is still a video gamey ass video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, to the point that all the Metroidvania stuff that you're you're balancing something that has to work mechanically in the game, something that has to make sense in the high fantasy setting, and something that doesn't distract from the human and genuine interactions, that is a really difficult balance to strike. It's yeah. it's a fantastic celebration of this medium, and it's it's and it's proof that this is the medium for this story because this story would not have worked as a movie. I think as a TV show, it would have lost all the sort of creativity in in exploration because all of that is just on its own path. Fight I scenes mean, would have sucked. Yeah, exactly. You can't tell the story in two and a half hours because this is about the growth of a, a father and a son and the development and i think you if you tried sure but i think you'd be missing on a lot of stuff here yeah. and the fact that this is a video game that i played for i believe god i want to say like 30 35 hours that the credits rolled and i still had so much to go back to do and i have that option to yeah. do that um makes me want to keep going back because i i fundamentally love traversal and exploration and combat yeah and so there was no part of this game that i dread i'll put it this way like i finished far cry 5 recently and I wanted to go back and 100% that game. And I I went into all those, like, you know, Mad Dog McCool <laughs> levels where you have to, like, do time trials and stuff like that. And I was like, I hate this stuff. Yeah. But there isn't a single part of God of War that I'm, like, dreading no. returning to yeah, or I ha- doing again. I know? had that moment, too. I've, uh, the story took me about 25 or so hours, and I've played another about 15 exploring other places and collecting other things. And I'm not done. And I don't dread a single more minute that I'll get to play. Like, I'm looking forward to all of that and mm-hmm. being finding every little thing because finding it is its own reward, but it is fun to find it. Yeah. Like, the actual act of looking for these things and scouring the environment is so rewarding in and of itself that even if the end result of collecting a certain thing may not be worth it, the journey there is so worth yeah, it. Yeah, and finishing the game and panning out on the map and seeing so much of it still uh, shrouded in fog was just like really enticing and it yeah. sort of made me go like oh my god like i there there's so much left for me to yes. do and i don't really like that's the thing like i i love i love horizon but i feel like when i finished that game i went back and i collected like mugs like coffee mugs and tin cups and stuff like that and i think uh, horizon's one of the one of the best games on playstation hands down but i think that like the um the the sort of the the intimacy of this game and and the the world being so bizarre and, and I mean that in the best way possible. Mm. Um, it is just so far. And whereas like Horizon has a lot of nightmare giant dinosaur monsters, right? But it's mostly a sort of familiar world that feels sort of used future. I mean, once you sort of get the gist of it, you get the gist of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with this game, um, it does so much more in terms of just like weird 70s prog rock album cover in the same way that Thor Ragnarok did or mm-hmm. heavy metal does or something like that. Like it just feels whimsical and scary and dangerous and i don't know what lurks around another corner because it might be a massive evil thing or it might be an intimate moment between me and my son Mm -hmm. i just want to keep finding those so going into it i was sort of i was sort of dreading it being too linear because we've gotten really accustomed to huge open world games Mm -hmm. at the same time going into this after playing far cry which is just a huge just massive sprawling open world where i'm like oh i i I want to see what happens but i have to Run around the map left and right. Uh, it does a it does a really good job of of being very wide linear. Uh, like it, it does it, it. God of War is fairly like your point A to point B. Like yes. it's very clear what your next thing is. But yeah. there are side quests and there mm-hmm. is I mean there is backtracking and there's a world to explore. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't have that. It it doesn't set off my open world fatigue alarm. No. Uh, there are so many times where like. Especially with, uh, they've started to fix a bit with some of the earlier Ubisoft games, like yeah. Assassin's Creed Unity around that mm-hmm. time. It's like things were put on the map for the sake of putting things on the map. Where yeah. everything here, there's an intentionality to all of it. And it relates to the world, it relates to the characters. There's a heft to it and importance for me wanting to seek it out. And I think that's what makes it, even 15 hours after the fact, not, it doesn't bore me at all that I have to go look for another 10 Well, d- and, and I was thinking about that, and I think it's because, um, like, sort of uh, topographically, uh, this is not a uniform world in that like I know what it's like to climb to the top of a mountain in Far Cry once I've done it once or I know what it's like to climb to the top of a tower in Assassin's Creed or um, sail to an island in Wind Waker but uh, 
what this game does is it it shows you in an, an, an environment you haven't been to yet that maybe you'll stumble upon in the wild or maybe you'll your sto- the story will bring you there but the way you get through it or traverse the top of it is completely different every time like it's not just like a simple like climb the wall type of thing like it's, it's not formulaic it's not at all yeah. like you and don't so, you don't know what happens next and not in the corny like oh you'll be on the edge of the, your seat it's more like it's obscured yeah, you it's very know. sort of like yeah. Indiana Jones. Like, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to walk across a rope bridge that will collapse or if I will climb up a mountain or there'll be a massive boss fight or a set piece. It's really hard to tell, and that sort of keeps me going. Um, and like I was saying before, I really think that this is like, it takes some of the best parts of some of my favorite PlayStation games. Um, I think there's it's got a little bit of Journey in there. It's oh, got yeah. a little bit of Last of Us. It's got a little Uncharted, a little Horizon, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, and it brings them all together. In this game, that's like this just massive love letter to PlayStation. Yeah. I think like I, it feels I'm like just so happy a, it exists. It's such a smart distillation and took all of the lessons learned from all those mm-hmm. games and made this cohesive whole out of the the journey thing too. Really struck me because at the beginning of the game, it's like your objective is very simple. Like yeah. plot wise, this game is very simple, but it widens out to be so complex and so layered and so deep and really enriched by its characters. Like yeah. it's a very character focused game. The cool thing about the plot, and again, no spoilers, yeah. is that. Um, it feels significant, it feels important, and it feels worth doing, but it doesn't feel like it has to happen immediately. So you don't have that weird remorse for ex- exploring like you do in like, I don't know, say you're playing like Breath of the Wild, and like the princess got kidnapped. You can hear her screaming from that tower. And you're like, but first I wanna like cook 100 turkey legs. You know, it feels distant there. With this game, you want to get to where you need to get to, um, but it's not necessarily life or death. Yeah. And so you don't feel bad about taking your time. In fact, um, you're kind of encouraged to do that. Yeah. Uh, Atreus is very often, as you said before, saying sort of like, well, you know, we, we just did that thing. We can like go explore or you can just, you know, go to the next thing. It's, it's up to you, really. And what's so cool about that is they play on that expectation of that sort of idea of an open world and things will be like. Atreus wants to go explore and then Kratos doesn't want to, but then you start doing it and Atreus will be like, I thought you didn't want to do that. And Kratos is like, it will help us on the journey. Yeah. So I will do it. That's really and smart. Like, oh, I'll, that's I'll say so in, smart. in terms of um, play styles in this game too, the, uh, the, the, f- the combat is really interesting because it's, I think it's about as creative as you want it to be. Yes. It can be straightforward button, button mashy for the most part, aside from a, f- a few moments and few enemies. Um, but it's also like once you really dig in in the skill tree, if you're really looking for that level of customization um, down to particular mo- moves or moments or attributes, you can you can dig into all the nitty gritty of all that. And it gets really, really deep for a game that uh, I did not expect any of that in. Again, yeah, me neither. expect bigger than what you're expecting. Um, but I, I really appreciated that because it made me sort of get out of my comfort zone down the line just because I felt bad about uh, neglecting a lot of the stuff that I had. Yeah. I don't think it does the best job of like forcing you into those scenarios. No, not always. There's but, some stuff later in the game where I think it does. Like mm-hmm. I would say for the most part through the story, I kind of stuck to what I thought were my best guns and stuck with that. They're yeah. not real guns, but just my best Why'd weapons. You spoil the guns? So there are no modern guns in the game. Guns of war. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I stuck to what I felt most comfortable with, but in the later, especially post-game combat scenarios, I felt like I needed to test out more yeah. things. There are more variety to be able to deal with. The, they throw more enemies at you and different types of enemies and stronger enemies. I'm, I felt like I'm on an optional that. side thing right now that I'm just getting, I just, I'm getting completely wrecked on. Uh, yeah. And I'm just playing on normal, by the way, which is what you should play. Cause I, I, I like dip down to easy to check it out for a little bit. And it's like, it's a great way to experience the story. I think that's actually what that mode's called. Um, so like just call it just show me the story but uh it's it's almost too passive to to yeah. really feel like any sort of pushback or achievement for accomplishing yeah. anything outside of the puzzles um but i'm fighting this one side area right now mm-hmm. and it's just incredibly difficult to me so it's making me go whatever you have isn't working yeah so go back to the drawing board move some stuff around move some stats around and come back in with a fresh set of gear and see what happens so yeah i think it'll be uh for people who want that that really just good, crunchy, challenging experience, it's there. I oh, mean, there's, yeah. there's the difficulty mode, God of War, where it's like, hey, you want to do this? Let's do this. And yeah. it's like, you can't change it later. You sure? Yep. Like, the text is in red. And you're like, all right, well. It's scary. Yeah. 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 I love it. Uh, I dig that. I think that, um, I mean, I hope that, I hope that this is received well by by fans. Like honestly, that's the thing. By like none, purists. Yeah, but yeah. like that's the thing is none of us are like hardcore God of War fans. You know, I think there's a certain appreciation. I remember playing them, you know, in high school and being like, this is fun. Um, Sort of, I don't like the main character. Really, I don't like, I like, I don't like Kratos, and I've said that. I think David Jaffe got pissed off and tweeted at us or something. But like, I think this is this is proof that video games can grow up without selling out. 
Uh, it's still very much a video game. It's not. It's not like a, a breathy walking simulator. It's still a game where you riff off riff off ogres' heads and you know step on skeletons. But. I mean, I, by nature, our our the medium of video games is iterative, but it's also about evolution. It is about uh, growth and leveling expansion up, yeah. and leveling up yeah. and changing, right? And and becoming more powerful and stuff like that. And Get good. It's also about. I mean, you can't. They're, like you look at a character like Kratos or Mario or Sonic or Crash or anybody like that, they've been interpreted by so many different people in so many different ways, and everyone has their own connection to those to those characters. And there's something really special about that. And I think that like I'm so happy that this team at Sony Santa Monica has been allowed to tell this story um, from the same studio that's told this story in in a, in a bold new way because I think that's that's how this world changes and evolves and this medium is as, 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 as an artistic form changes, changes and evolves. And it's also, it, this is about mythical characters that have been interpreted thousands of different yeah. ways. So like doubling down on that, there is no style guide to, no. to this. It's the monomyth. It's, very, it's the yeah. hero's journey. Yeah. Like. yeah. These are, this is royalty free, free clip art. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think the Go way it, it uses the mythology, like I'm not well versed in Norse mythology, but I think for a wide audience, you probably know, Loki, Thor, Odin, and that's about it. Whatever's been in the Thor M MCU movies. Yeah. And this, this movie really <laughs> plays with the full extent of Norse mythology yeah. and I think uses characters and figures in that mythology that you wouldn't expect them to use if you don't really know the mythology but are still so fascinating to learn about. And yes. I love that. They, they do something very clever too, which is a, it does a good job of, of managing to sell you on the world without breaking the immersion and hitting you over the head with it. Uh, fun fact, um, like Kratos is pretty much illiterate. I mean, not really a huge surprise. You know, you've seen the guy, what he does. But uh, Atreus isn't. So there'll be these runes written around the world. And I can't read runes. I know what the Bluetooth logo looks like. But other <laughs> than that, it's not a thing I'm familiar with. Yeah. So Kratos will see this thing, and you'll you'll press square. And I'm like, boy, what does it say? And the kid will come up and be like, oh, you know, my calculations are correct. Like, you know, you know he'll yeah. be like, and then he'll tell you a little bit of Norse mythology. He'll give you a little bit of fairy tale. But it's, it's told in this kind of, with this levity of... A kid trying to explain something to his to his dad yeah. who maybe yeah. isn't listening a whole lot. So it's got this kind of like, it it doesn't just immediately berate you with like yes, you know. I don't like I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't feel like somebody's just like copy pasting Wikipedia entries. No, yeah. it's very smart about its storytelling of other stories and just about the nature of storytelling because so much of it is informed by mythology that has been around for eons and mm -hmm. the way they integrate that in the way they tell stories and usually. Side stories or other bits of lore you're hearing mirror what's going on in Kratos and Atreus's story, and it's it's really smart about how it layers that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if uh, you know we didn't get the point across in the last 36 minutes, uh, we enjoy the game and we <laughs> think it is a good game. Uh, but that being said, definitely check out Jonathan's review. Yes, mm -hmm. please do. Yeah. We also do we plan we're gonna plan on doing a full spoiler. There will be a I full believe. spoiler cast. Okay. Yeah, a little bit after the game, so people yeah. have time to get because it's a thing where I don't think this game is built on twists, but so much of it is enriched by experiencing it firsthand. I totally so, agree. Yeah. Element yeah. of surprise. And, um, yeah, and don't be a bag and spoil the game for yeah, people. Just don't. don't bag. Also, uh, I think Jonathan and I were talking about, and hopefully we get to do this, about sure. doing a, a sort of video together It's a little bit more personal about some of like the the stuff that happens in this game that sort of yeah. echoed stuff that we've experienced in real life. So I, because uh, I, I once threw an axe at a tree and years later got it back. No, we, we had, there's a personal connection. And I want to talk about it, but... Um, I don't know. I'm wary of exposing yeah. a vulnerable side to the uh, uh, historically mean IGN audience, but <laughs> yeah. to be blunt, we're, we're going to do it anyway. Be so. nice. Um, yeah, but that being said, I I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to be talking about this game for the rest of the year and then some. So uh, yeah, God of War. Um, keep an eye on IGN for plenty more coverage, and including where to find all the little trinkets you got to go up, go dig around for and how to beat that big monster you're fighting. Uh, I'm Max Scoville, Jonathan Dornbush, and Brian Altano. You can find us all on Twitter. I'm Max Scoville. He's J.M. Dornbush, and he's Agent Bizzle. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy God of War because we certainly are and did, or are were whatever. We'll always. I need to finish. We'll continue it, so. to yes. <laughs> I want to play more of the game. So you can do that. It's the end of the video now. Have a good night. Good night or morning. I don't know what time it is. Whatever time it is. I hope you're enjoying. Hope yourself. you're doing well. Yes. Take care. Bienvenidos. Hola.